move forward. Turn left. Move back. So the last few videos, first we placed the robot on the table and then we added surf movement to the robot. So now what we want to do is we want to control the movements but this time through voice. So we're going to add in some speech recognition. So let's start this in the view did load method. So over here we'll create a function to fire up the speech recognition. So let's start speech recognition. And we'll name the function uh, start speech recognition. It's not very creative. Okay, now let's create this function. So we'll create a separate section for speech recognition here. Over here, function start speech recognition. So to do speech recognition, we're not going to build code from scratch. Instead, Apple has already provided a framework called speech and we'll use that. So we're going to import the framework first, import speech. And now how does this module work? Well, to do speech recognition, you need to first ask for permission. Step number one, ask for permission. And then we need to start the audio recording. So audio record. And then we will do the speech recognition. So you ask for permission to do speech rec recognition. Then you collect audio samples from the microphone and you pass that sample onto the speech recognition framework. Now let's fill this in one by one. For permission, we'll again create a function called request permission. Oops, too many mistakes now. <laughs> and then we'll create a function called start audio recording here. To record the audio, and pass the audio samples to the speech recognition framework and then we'll create a speech recognize function to recognize the speech and convert that into text. Now let's make each of these functions one by one. So first request permission. So before we do this, let's initialize some of the speech recognition objects that we will use. So here, these would be the variables for speech recognition. So we need three, three objects from the framework. First, a speech recognizer object, then a speech request object, and a speech task object. So let's create each speech recognizer. This is of type SF speech recognizer. And let's just initialize this and to instantiate this into an object. Great. So if you hover over speech recognizer, you can see that it's an object that you use to check the availability of the speech recognition service. So this is what we'll use for uh, checking availability and requesting permission. So we also need a speech request equals SF speech recognition no, speech audio buffer recognition request. So you'll see this is a request to recognize speech from captured audio content, such as audio from the device's microphone. So this essentially allows you to transcribe live audio into text. And finally, we also want speech task. This would be a speech recognition task. And this is a task that will essentially monitor our progress and tell us when the recognition has started or ended and stuff. So first what we want to do is we want to take the speech recognizer class and request authorization. So this will give a pop-up window asking the user whether to allow permission or not. So request authorization and the closure would give a callback based on what the user chose. So authorization status and inside here we'll do different stuff based on whether the user authorized the permission or not. So first let's take the case that the user did give permission. So if authorization status equals authorized, the user granted your app's request to perform speech recognition. So if the user authorized the function, 
then we'll just type in print authorized. So for now, I've just added a dummy print statement here saying authorized. And of course, when you actually build this app and put it on the stores, you want to initialize the AR view here only after the user authorized it. But because it's a tutorial project, I'm just giving some dummy functions just so that we can focus on the main thing first. Else if the user denied permission, so authorization status equals denied, you can take appropriate action then. Denied. And finally, else if authorization status equals not determined, so do not know yet, then just print. Finally, if the authorization status is restricted, i the device prevents your app from performing speech recognition, so the device can't do it, then you say not available. Speech recognition not available. So that's the request permission function. Let's just build it and see if everything's okay. Oops, build failed. Yeah, of course, because we haven't created these functions. So the request permission function is done. And the next step in starting the speech recognition process is once you've uh, asked for permission, you can start the audio recording from the microphone. And what you want to do here in this function is first record the audio from the microphone and pass the audio onto the speech recognizer framework so you can start translating. So let's create this function next. Start audio recorder. Again, no parameters. So for the audio stuff, we need to have some global variables holding some instantiated objects used for the audio. So let's create that first here as global variables. So I'm going to create audio. So first we need an audio engine. And this would be an object of type AV audio engine. And you can see this is a group of connected audio node objects used to generate and process audio signals and perform audio input and output. So it's the master object if you want to put it that way. And you need to create nodes for this audio engine and every node you can think of it like a channel which either receives input from the microphone say or throws output samples say to the speaker and we'll create the nodes later on in the audio function so here the next thing we want is the audio session so this would be of type AV audio session so this, is, this essentially initializes the audio recording, whether you want it as an input from the microphone or output to the speaker. Audio session, and we want the shared instance. Great. So we'll use these two to do the audio stuff. So now back to the audio recording function. Let's first create the input node. And then, after the input node's created, we'll start the audio engine. So what is an input node? It's essentially, you can think of it like a channel which you initialize to record audio through a certain stream. So if you want input audio from the microphone, you'll create a node for that and configure the audio sessions to do that. And only after you've created a node can you start the audio engine because if you do the other way around, say if you started the audio engine and then created the input node, it won't work because the audio engine has no nodes to work with. It needs a node to uh, get it started. So you need to add node first and then start the order engine. Remember, the order is important. So let's add in the node. So let node equals audio engine dot input node. And then the recording format would be node dot output format for buzz number zero. Now let's install a tap on the node. So this would notify you every time a new uh, set of samples is available in a buffer. So node.install tap. You can see it installs an audio tap on the bus to record, monitor, and observe the output of the node. So every time a new buffer of samples is available, you can access them here. So install tap on bus zero. Buffer size, let's choose 1024. It's pretty standard. 
and the audio format would be the recording format that we just created earlier and the block so this would be a closure and this would give return us a buffer containing the samples and the AB audio time which we don't really need so what should we do here when we receive a buffer every time well we'll pass the buffer pass the audio samples from the buffer to speech recognition so that it will transcribe the audio to text and we'll create that later but just remember this is the callback function for every time an audio set of audio samples is received great so now that we've installed the node let's configure the audio session to record from the microphone so to configure it to record from the microphone we'll use the audio session object we created earlier and do set category and you can see this method throws an error so we need to wrap it on, use the try statement before it and wrap it under a do catch block so here the audio session category would be record so this would be the category for recording audio from the microphone and the mode would be measurement and options would be we'll choose dog others so this essentially lowers the volume of any other audio sources on the phone while this audio is playing and of course we need to use the try statement before this and that means add a do catch block before so now that we've configured the audio session to record from the microphone let's set this active so we'll use audio session set active and again this method throws an error so we need to use the try statement before the options would be notify others on deactivation so wrap it under a try statement and er any errors would be ca caught here so finally after the configuration is done now we can start the audio engine for this I'll use the audio engine object we created earlier in the global variable section and first let's prepare it to start and then we'll do audio engine oops audio engine dot start and again the start method throws an error so again try statement before great so that should be it to start the audio recording now as we said before here is the callback for the audio samples received and every time we receive the audio samples we need to pass it onto the speech recognition task so to do that, we need to start working on the speech recognize function. And if you remember before, we added in some global variables for speech recognition, such as the recognizer, the speech request, and the speech task. And we'll pass the buffer samples to the speech request. So here, what we'll do is, because this is inside a closure, we'll need to use self to access the speech request variable. So speech request and the global variable, and then we'll append to this an audio buffer. So this buffer would be the buffer that we receive from the callback. So buffer. So in short, every time the audio is received here, the, it will be stored in the buffer variable and we'll pass the buffer variable to the speech request function. And with that, let's get started working on the speech recognize function. So let's create a function speech recognize for the speech recognize function, first we'll just check if this is available with the current region or the, with the current device. Check for availability. For that, we'll use the guard statement to check if the speech recognizer object is available. SF speech recognizer. Again, if you look at the description, it checks for the availability of the service. So if we initialize this and there's nothing thrown, nothing given, that means the device is not available. So if such uh, object is not available, we will print speech recognizer not available. And then we'll return. So this will exit this function and not continue anything afterwards. So if this is not currently available, I temporarily off, then we'll print temporarily not not working great so that's the availability check so once we've done the availability check we'll use we need to set the speech task off and running 
So this is the bit where we get access to the recognized text. So speech task, if you remember from the global variables, is this object that we created of type speech recognition task. So we'll go over here and speech task equals speech recognizer dot recognition task. So this gives the executes a speech re recognition request and delivers the results to the handler block. So the speech recognition request would be the request we made here, the speech request. So we'll pass that on here, speech request. And the result handler, it's a closure. So this would be the recognition result. And we'll name that result. And if there's an error, it will throw that as well. So here, once we receive the results, what we want to do is we want to check if there is text available. So first, let's check if there's a result. Result equals result. Else, if there's no result, we'll just return and exit this function. Now, if there is a result, we'll get the recognized text from it. So for that, I'll use recognized text equals result dot best transcription. Let's just try building and see what's wrong. And of course, so it's not auto-recognizing, so I'm just building and seeing what's wrong. And of course, it's it says cannot assign to property speech task. Uh, speech task is a let constant. Okay, so we need to go back to our global variables and change it from let to var because this needs to change because we're assigning something new here for speech task. So we build again. Now it's fine. And now, yeah, it's auto-filling. Fine. So... If you look again, results.best translation gives the results with the highest level of confidence. And from this, what we want is we want to get segments and then last value of the segments. So what this method does is it essentially gives you the last word that we just said. So the way this framework works is it transcribes the whole text for a 60 second period. And it gives you partial results along the way but the, it would store everything in a single array. So in that array, you'll have the whole set of text since the beginning of the recording. And what we want is just the most recent uh, transcription, i.e. the most recent words we said. And that's what we get with this method. So say, for example, if I'm telling the robot to move forward, this method will give me the forward word. If I'm telling it to move backward, it will give me the backward word. And as you'll see later, we'll use this to give the robot appropriate commands to move. So that's the recognized text that we get in return. So now what I want to do is, based on the recognized text, I want to do the appropriate animations or movement. So if we move. So we have already created a move function before in the previous episode over here. And it accepts a string which will indicate the direction we want it to move to. So we'll use the recognized text as an input here. So if we go back to our move function, you'll see if the last word that we said was forward, it will move forward. If it was back, it will do that, and so on and so forth. That's why we get access to just the last word we said, not anything before. I know it's a quick hack, and not, it's not the most elegant way to do it, but it's just one of the limitations of the way the current framework is set up. It's not really built for recognizing short commands, but it's more built for recognizing like a whole chunk of audio and transcribing it to text. So that's a hack that we work with and that will complete speech recognize function. I'm just going to capitalize this. So one of the other issues with this framework is every time a transcription is done and gives you a partial result, this result handler gets called about three times. And I don't know why that is. It's just one of, again, one of the limitations of the framework and others have reported it as well on the net. So to account for that, another quick hack that we'll do is we will create a counter. So we're going to create a counter. So just before this, we'll create the count variable and initialize it to zero. And every time this callback is called, we will append the counter. And so when it gets called three times, it will go from count equals one, count equals two, count equals three. And what we want to do is we want to call this methods just once. So just when the first time 
a callback is called. So we use if count equals one, we execute the, these functions. And this essentially means every time this a transcription is done, uh, this method will be called three times, and we'll just check the first time. And the first time it's called, we'll get the last word, and then we'll move the robot based on that word. And once it's finished calling three times, we will reset the counter so that the next time we speak, it will start from zero again. So this is just a way to just call the move function once and not many times because this callback method again gets called three times every time a transcription is done. When we rebuilt it, there's an error. So it's just cannot convert value of type transcription segment into expected argument string. So the move method expects a string, but this is of type transcription segment. So we can convert this into string because it has an inbuilt method called substring. So the string representation of the utterance. And now if you click build, of course this is an option. Let's just force wrap it. Oh, one last error again. Too many errors. And call to move method and closure. Okay, this is because this is a closure and we need to add the self word before this. Great, so that's done. The speech recognize function. And here, oh, because it's not capitalized. Let's call the speech recognize function again. So two other things that we need to do before we build this. So if you remember in a speech recognition process, we asked for permission. And for this to work, we need to go to info list in the project folder. So info.plist. And over here, we need to add in a new uh, permission request. For that, we can click add here to add in a new property list. And we're going to use the privacy. Let's just scroll down this one. So speech recognition usage description. So this permission and we'll use, so this will take over the alert pop-ups when the user opens the app. And in the text we'll say, need to use speech recognition, please allow permission, please allow. And then we also need to ask for permission to use the microphone, not just the speech recognition framework. And so we'll add in another property list and this would be privacy, the microphone one. So if you scroll down, you'll see microphone usage description. And again, need to use microphone. Please allow. So these two would take care of the pop-up request. Now the second thing we need to sort is let's go back to view controller. Now if you go to our object placement methods and in the start AR session, so this is something we did in the first episode where we initialize the AR session before we place an object there. And here in our session initialization, if you remember, we added debug options equals show anchor geometry. And this was to visualize the planes as the, the planes detected by the app as the camera moved around. And because now it's the final version, we don't need this anymore. So we're just gonna comment that out. Great, so now it's building fine. You can see all the errors are gone. And essentially, in the start speech recognition method, we first ask for permission, the function here which we define, and then we start the audio recording, and we pass the audio samples to the speech request, and with that, we start the speech recognition task. So that completes our whole project.